hot in here. It's it's uh it's hot. And it's not helping that the oven's behind me cooking my ham. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the good old boy, that's me, where we cook recipes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog, where we have over 400 recipes and the horizon, and a very popular recipe on our blog is our crock pot brown sugar holiday ham. And you're like, Mikey, it's May. What holidays do we have in May that need ham? That's for like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Well, let me tell you something. If it comes to ham in my house, every day is a holiday as long as there's a ham in place. Ha ha ha. My wife got the joke. I can be a little bit of a ham around the house if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But today, this, the ham, right here is the star. And it's a really, really simple recipe. It's very, very good. My one suggestion to you, my friends, my family on the interwebs, is that you find a good ham. That we have a got, we have a got, to, we have a got to spiral a slice of ham. I don't know where the Italian accent came from, but we got a spiral sliced ham. Actually, we got two of them. Um, one we've got already prepped and ready, and then this little one right here. That's um, not a little one, but well, okay. Well, it's not a little ham, but uh, this ham directly in front of me, um, we got it, and it's an off-brand ham. I guess you want to call it. We're not going to name any names or anything because we want you to y'all to pick your ham that your favorite ham is. We got a spiral sliced ham, and it's not a bad ham, but it's a little clovey because you know one of the ingredients that they use to yeah, spice we had, up a ham. Is we've clove. never had a ham that's come kind of pre-spiced, and this one for some reason has like a spice in it. It was a spicy ham, not a hot spicy, but a clove spicy. If you like clove, you'd, you'd really it. would be great for ham and beans, uh -huh. which is what we'll do. We will do a recipe later with ham and beans. Um, we're actually going to kind of break tradition. We know that you know that you think that we might just do crock pot recipes, but my wife's original cooking blog was goodnessgracious.com. Well, goodnessgracious.com has an e in it it's not like normal people oh it's not it like is. goodness gracious it's not like that it's actually goodness gracious because you actually pronounce our last name good it's a ooh not a <laughs> uh, okay that's what the e's for at the end otherwise we would be good which we are good the e just makes us a little better it's goodnessgracious.com and we will be linking over to that uh that site soon with an upcoming follow-up recipe with what you can do with your leftover ham if and you have any. But today let's get to this one the crock pot brown sugar holiday ham and it, like I said it's very simple this is the batch of recipes you will need. You will need one ham and another thing I suggest is making sure that you have a ham that fits a crock pot or a crock pot that fits a ham. If you have a smaller crock pot get a smaller ham. It doesn't have to be a spiral sliced ham. You can get one of those little square hams, whatever, it doesn't matter, as long as it fits your crock pot. And I'll tell you about the little problem we had last night and how we rectified that problem here in a little bit. You take your ham, you Aww. kick your camera. I get all over my wife for beating that camera that y'all are watching me on and I just booted tell it. <laughs> Shh! <laughs> Only one of us cannot be perfect, okay? <laughs> I'm not used to you not being perfect. Take your ham, oh, put my. it in your pot, flinging juice everywhere. <laughs> And that ham, I, we tested a while ago, it fits perfectly in this pot. That was by luck. It's that a 10 pound ham. And most of the time I try and buy like seven pound hams, uh -huh. but all shape matters of the ham. So if it's like got a big bump on it, it's gonna be harder to fit into your crock pot regardless of poundage. So look at the shape and vision your crock pot. Yeah, or just take your crock pot with you into the store. No. Put the ham in the crock pot, freak out the people that work at no. your local store. No, no. So we have the ham in the crock pot. A lot of hams will come with a little seasoning packet. This one came with the brown sugar glaze, which is actually well, what we're making brown so. sugar and spices in a baggie. And here's what we do with this. Ready? We put it in the receptacle because we're not going to use that. We've got our own little spice going on here. The first thing you need to do is you need to take one cup of brown sugar already packed in the cup and put that right on top of your ham 
And then we get a little messy and kick my camera again. <laughs> take your ham. <laughs> you told on yourself. Or take your, your brown sugar and pack it down. Try to evenly get it like a cover over the top of your ham. Just like this, okay? Just like that. You do that. You make a smiley face for <laughs> You pack it down in there just like that. Your hand's going to get a little messy for this. Oh, well. And, by the way, everything's already cooked in this, so when you lick your fingers when you're done, <laughs> I won't tell. Then you take one half cup, is that right? Yep. Of molasses. No. No, maple not molasses. I'm not sorry. Not molasses. Maple syrup. One half cup of maple syrup. And you put it right over the top of the brown sugar. Now, we're using pure maple syrup, but if Is there you, such a thing as an impure maple syrup? Well, there's what people call pancake syrup, which is not always pure maple syrup. It's like an imitation kind of thing. And if maple syrup's not your thing, you can feel free to use regular syrup. Or you, you would probably be okay with putting any kind of sugar substitute, like honey... Because that's, in essence, what you're doing. You're just you're sugar. sugaring up yep. the, the salty ham. Yep. Salt, sugar go really good together. Um, but maple syrup gives it that, well, maple flavor. So if you can find a pure maple syrup, go after it. If you can't... Some people just don't like it. You're not going to taste the maple part of the syrup. Not really. You're just going to taste the sugary part of it. Aunt Jemima will work in a pinch. Don't pinch your Aunt Jemima. She might pinch you back. And then you also need two cups of pineapple juice. Now, like I said, we have a follow-up recipe to go with this. Actually, a couple follow-up recipes that we're going to be doing to go along with this ham. And um, so instead of just using pineapple juice, we're going to be using pineapple chunks in the can. And we've got the lids popped just enough to get the juice out, leaving the chunks in. So, and it's about two cups a piece, right over top of the ham so now that ham, I will tell you I measured it and it's not but it's okay it's close it's what it's what we have right now so that's what we're gonna do and we've done it many times before but I've never like fully measured it out if I had pineapple juice in the cupboard we would just use pineapple juice but since we're gonna make this other recipe that we need to drain pineapple chunks we're not gonna be wasteful we're just gonna use what we got like I said we're gonna save these for later yep. we'll put them in a container keep them in the fridge until we're ready to show you the next recipe yep. which will be very soon but now you see that's all you do nothing else needed your ham is in the pot your brown sugar went on top your maple syrup went on top of that and then your pineapple juice on top of that so super super sweet the liquid that will come from this is going to be very sweet it's gonna mix very well with the salt and the smokiness of the ham and then all you do is simply take your lid and you put on top of your ham just like that now this lid fits perfectly right over the top of the ham it's not quite touching the ham it's kind of close but it's going to be fine and it's keeping everything enclosed it's going to be sealed off that way no heat escapes and that way it'll cook up your ham very well last night as we were prepping this recipe we used a ham that was bigger uh, than the crock pot we had and the lid wouldn't fit. The lid kind of hung just on top like that. It's not going to cook the ham very well. So what my wife did was she took some aluminum foil and she just made a little tent. She let the ham go camping and it was kind of an extreme kind of thing. It was intense. Ah. But uh, she made a little tent to go over the top with the aluminum foil until the ham cooked down and then once the ham cooked down a little bit the lid fit on there perfectly. But for some reason you get a ham and it doesn't fit in your crock pot, you still want to do this recipe, make a little tent of foil. Just seal it off. The whole point is you want to seal off the edges so the heat stays in the crock pot. And it keeps all the moisture in too, keeps right. the meat moist. You don't want dry ham because otherwise you're having, well, bacon. So I'm going to wash my hands real quick. And then I will show you the final product. You have brown sugar like everywhere. <laughs> oh no. All over the top of that poor car. You need to kind of dust that off or it'll probably stick. No, yeah, we don't yeah. want that on there. We'll get that off. Yeah, yeah. We'll just let it fling all over the counter instead. Of course. Because, you know, I'll clean that up later. <laughs> How high do we want to set this for? Um, I think we're setting it on low for, I want to say, six to eight hours. Okay, low. In your crock pot for six to eight hours. Now, if you're putting uh -huh. a smaller ham in your six quart crock pot, 
that isn't filling it all the way up like that, you're probably going to want to cook it less. It's not going to take near much time. Right, four yeah, hours. Think this way. The ham is already cooked. Everything that you have in your ingredients, nothing needs to be cooked to cook out like the bad stuff, you know, germs and bacteria and stuff like that. So everything's already cooked. You're pretty much just heating everything up, and the heat is letting the juice and the syrup and the brown sugar kind of all mix together and make its own glaze to go for the ham. When that all gets done, you're going to have a ham that looks like this. I'll just do it like that. Just bring it out. It's a ham. It's simple. Can you see that in the car? No, not Ooh. really. Why don't you move your other camera? Yeah, let's do it like that. That's why I should give it that that's hot, by the way. So we'll move this one out of the way. Yep. And uh -oh. we'll unplug it first. And then we'll move it out of the way. I'll plug it back in and set the timer on that later. Let's go ahead and show them what this one looks like. Slide that in the frame right there. Take off your lid. And as you can see with this lid, it's still... <laughs> I can't the camera. Boy, oh boy. As you can see, the lid is still... And I, to be honest, we made this... Did you hit that camera? Did you <laughs> quit it! <laughs> but the lid is ajar on top of the ham. Now, to be honest, it did fit in there, but we messed with this ham because we actually had this ham for dinner last night. So when I pull the lid off here and it looks like the ham has been mutilated, it's, it's because it has been. Because we had it for dinner last night. But, but there's still tons of it left. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we fed me. I had a couple sandwiches out of it. Mama had a sandwich. Addie had a sandwich. And as you can see, you can barely tell that this ham has been eaten on. Let me grab. But that's a, because we're going to make other recipes for you guys. And yeah. show you how to make our breakfast burritos. Mm -hmm. And um, how we're using ham on the grill. Can I tell them what it is? No. Yeah. Ham and pineapple kebabs. Mm -hmm. They're very, very good. The we barbecue. Have two, we, we have, have two different ways. Yeah. Ham, on, on the Goodness Gracious site, we have ham and pineapple kebabs. And we also have a barbecue version, which is, well, a ham and pineapple kebab with barbecue sauce on top. Grilled up to perfection. It's fantastic. But here we have our ham. See, some of it, even on a spiral sliced ham, this down here is all sliced up real good, and then on the back end of it, it's not sliced up as well, so it comes off in chunks. And that's, that's what we're going to yeah. be using for our kebabs. But for demonst demonstration purposes, demonstra de demonstrative? I don't know. It's hard to say. But for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to take this one little slice of ham. Oh my. I'm going to put it on my plate, and I'm going to eat it. I'm just going to eat it just like this. I'm going to tear it off and I'm going to eat it. You know why I'm going to do it this way with my fingers? Because it's my house and I can't. <laughs> you want to put it on a sandwich? Put it on a sandwich. You want to eat it just like this? I'm not going to judge you because that's the way I do it. It's really, really sweet from all the glaze. Mm. One thing about pineapple, pineapple juice, pineapple has a chemical in it called papaves and it tenderizes meat and it makes your meat even more tender you didn't know i was gonna say that did you yeah i'm trying to think there's something in fresh pineapple that isn't in canned pineapple and i'm trying to think that through because you don't want to use like fresh pineapple maybe that's what it is maybe yeah. I'm doing yeah i think you've got because I've used fresh pineapple like to grill or to add it to like some of our pork stuff. Well, the chemicals called and it like turns it into like mush. That's good. Yeah, but this I don't I think maybe and we're just totally showing our ignorance. Maybe here. it's because it's pasteurized. The juice might have some like acid in like you like when you make a roast mm -hmm. you like to use like juices and stuff for acids. I think. If you good. know what it's called, if I'm right, say Mikey, you're right. If Chris is right. There's no need to comment. Because you already know she is. But anyway, just, there's something about the canning process. I just know that canned pineapple, when you're serving it with the meat, doesn't make the meat mushy. But if you wow, use this meat ain't mushy at all. It's just juicy. Yeah, when you use fresh pineapple, a lot of times, like we've made some roasts before, like just pork roasts, and tried to use fresh pineapple, and it's like turned stuff mushy. And, mm. Mushy ham is not good. No, that ham is good. Like I said, and we had it last night, and you could really, really, really taste the clove in it. 
today, not as much. You could taste the clove in it as one of the spices, but it's not near as strong as it was last night. I like cloves. Because it sat in those juices all night long. Yeah, but just to like clarify, anything. we didn't add the clove. That no, was something no, that was, weird with what I purchased. Again, if, if you know what kind of ham you like, then it shouldn't be that bad. If anything, ask the dude working in the deli or the dudette, whatever have you, ask them, hey, what's a good ham that I could use for this meal, this dish? Right. Yeah, they'll, they should be able to point you in the right direction. But with that ham, I mean, you could taste the, the salt and the smokiness of the ham itself where it's been cured. I don't know what of, but uh, it's been cured. <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. Um, but I'm going to show you because I kind of ate that a little fast. So I'm going <laughs> to take my time. All, all for us, this right? Hey, no, this is not just. For sight. It's for all of y'all. It's for all of y'all. I want to make sure that you know the experience that I'm having, that you want to have that same experience, that joy. That, that happiness, that fulfillment that only a holiday ham can bring on any occasion. Mm. It's sweet, super, super sweet. It's also salty from the ham. I can taste the pineapple and the brown sugar. Well, and when we talk about- And I am. Oh, okay. I can also taste the maple. You can? I can. Okay. Maple syrup. Maple syrup. Syrup? <laughs> Maple syrup, maple syrup. It's the only thing that rhymes with purple. It comes from an old country song. Y'all remember what the title of that was? <laughs> but I can taste the maple in it. So if you like maple, use full maple syrup. I can taste it a little bit, but it's really good. Well, and I will say that oftentimes when we cook ham, we used to only cook ham for um, for holiday purposes, but now. It's a really economical way to make lots and lots of things. Like, mm -hmm. yes, that ham was probably like $25, and that felt really expensive, but I can get a whole big batch of our breakfast burritos, which would give us a hot breakfast morning. Like, it's going to make at least 24 breakfast burritos. It could make 48 if I wanted. If you think about what that would cost to stop and purchase at... Um, a local food chain, there's your purchase of the ham, and that doesn't even include the meals that are coming Think out. Think about of it. a fast food chain where you can go get a breakfast burrito. It's going to cost you a dollar. And we're going to make 24 burritos out of what's left over out of here. Plus. We use them, and, and maybe even more, depending on how much ham we have left. But uh, she said 48. That's $48 worth of burritos. Right. And we're going to spend what would you say it was for the ham? I think it was around $25 for that ham. Um, Sarah, Aunt Lou, finds lots of really great deals. She found, like, huge hams for, like, five bucks around the holidays. She got them really discounted. But this I purchased just this week um, for what we're doing. But anyhow, we, we're going to do that. We're going to grill with it because, like, ham steaks on the grill with, like, uh, pineapple rings or uh, kebabs, like, we're getting ready to make. We make ham and fried rice. We have lots of soups, ham and beans. All of that could probably come out of that ham. Yep. There, very there's easily. more than just one meal when you when you go and spend it's it. Very it should economical. be if you're going to spend that kind of uh, money for one meal or for one ingredient out of a store, you should get multiple meals out of it. Right. Um, and we will we'll have a bunch of them. Um, right. And that right there is just step one. I want you to stay tuned. We all we both do. Uh, we want you guys to stay tuned, where we will continue to introduce you more to goodnessgracious.com. That's goodnessgracious.com. That's goodnessgracious.com. We will show you that website, um, and then uh, stick with us over here at recipes.crock.com, where we'll keep uh, doing more recipes. But we do want to thank you guys for watching us here at recipesthatcrock.com, as well as youtube.com/slash Mikey Good. And if you haven't already, give us a subscribe down below, somewhere either over here or here, where that little bitty red box is that says subscribe. Subscribe where you will see more recipe videos as well as other things that we do on uh, my YouTube channel. Also give us a like over at Facebook at uh, Recipes That Croc, as well as Good Old Tunes with Good Old Boy, again that is me, where we do these recipes as well as some cover tunes and uh, other fun things from the family. But we again, again want to thank you guys for watching and uh, stay tuned for more recipes with this ham. And we'll keep cooking if you keep watching, and all will be well. Thanks. Bye. Can I get another piece of ham? I suppose. Yay.